everyone. So we're talking about Patrick Lynch here on his books, different models. And I think on last one, I talked about the five dysfunctions of a team. So that's about like how different team members and the whole team behave and these dysfunctions can be seen in the team. Uh, the next one I wanted to talk about is the ideal team player. So ideal team player uh, is like about individually, each individual, uh, how they, how, how you know, he or she can become the ideal team player. And this is really complements the other one because this one goes the whole, goes about the whole team and this is more about like individuals. And obviously for a team to be great, or, you know, all the team members need to be ideal team players. Uh, so how do you become ideal team player or you know how can you make sure your team members are ideal team members so the model like again the book goes in the same uh, style like there is a fable which goes into a construction company how you know their ceo had to kind of uh, take a long leave and somebody else takes over and he's really keen on teamwork and uh, they need to hire because the business is growing um, and they need to hire someone on a senior role like C-suit and um, basically they're, you know, checking an employee, a potential candidate and he's very good in, in all his uh, kind of um, achievements, how he delivers projects and everything, uh, but he doesn't quite tick uh, the box in one area. Uh, and what is that area? So, well, in, the, uh, in this book, the model is that to become an ideal team player, you need to have three virtues. And all those three virtues need to be present uh, in an individual. Uh, there would always be kind of a bit high and low in different areas, but there needs to be at least a minimum amount of all of those. So what are those three virtues? Humble, hungry, and smart, these three. Uh, and uh, these, these are like three virtues that you must have all of them. You, you can't be just uh, humble and not the other two, or uh, just hungry and not the other two, or even having just two, uh, not the other one will not be good enough. Uh, so uh, in the story, the fable that is in the book that illustrates the model in practice, um, the, the person they are interviewing it has like two. He's very smart and he's very hungry, but he's not humble. And they kind of uh, really tries interviews, going uh, to lunch with him, talking to him, warning him about uh, the need for being humble in order to do well in, in this organization. And, um, well, I don't want to spoil the story if you want to read it, um, so let me not share the ending. But uh, the model goes, um, so humble is really about uh, focusing on others, not just always focusing on yourself, rather focusing on the team, focusing on the achievements of others, giving others credit, uh, being ready to do anything that is needed for the team. So those type of things come under humble, genuine humility. And this is a great virtue generally. I mean, obviously there are different schools of thoughts and all that, and there is a lot of talking about humble leadership and humility, the importance of that. And uh, I kind of um, find that resonates more with me. So uh, being humble is one. Uh, being hungry is that you, you must want to do more. I mean, there would be a healthy level of hunger. We are not talking about kind of workaholism or anything here. Uh, but uh, for example, you have to have a certain level of enthusiasm for wanting to do more work-wise, uh, wanting to learn more, wanting to take more responsibilities and things like that. If people are too laid back or you know can't uh, just just wanting to do their bit and then go, then they will not have the they will probably don't have this virtue. And uh, for a team to work well, so imagine someone in the team they just focus on their bit, that that wouldn't be really great. So for an ideal team player would have the level of hunger if if he or she finishes uh, the work assigned to him or her, uh, then you know he or she would look at people, is like uh, other people, like how can he help, let's say. Uh, and then there is um, about uh, being smart. So being smart is partly to do with emotional intelligence, uh, kind of having the common sense, being um, kind of uh, comfortable in different situations, um, being able to work with different people, being able to understand them, understand situations, where to say what, and things like that. Uh, so kind of uh, a bit subtle nuances, all those things. Uh, that's about being smart. 
And so those are the type of things, I mean, the three areas. And again, in the book, there is a brief assessment in terms of uh, some statements and you can find out uh, whether you are an ideal team player. And uh, these are all, uh, some of these resources are available freely on the Table Group website. You can download, I'll put the link below. Uh, and again, this is one I use uh, in my uh, work with my clients in terms of uh, the five dysfunction and the ideal team player um, and working with them. So, you know, hope you like that. If, if there's any questions or you would like to get in touch, please uh, comment below or send me a message. And uh, thank you for watching. See you in the next one.